Now, here on Take 10, it's my job to help you survive dream killers. Because I know every day you wake up, you got all these great ideas, you go forward, and all of a sudden, something happens that kills your dreams. We're in Genesis chapter 49, studying the life of Jacob blessing his children. And we want to talk about the last one that he comes to. Well, not, the Benjamin is the last one, but he comes to Joseph. And when he talks to Benjamin, he just says, you're going to be a great hunter, and you're going to have a lot of bounty, and you're going to count it at night. You're going to go out during the day and reap and gain that. May the blessing of Benjamin come on all of you. But listen to what he said to Joseph when he began to talk about blessing. He said, even by the God of thy father, who shall help you, and by the Almighty. Now, there's two things here, the God of your father and the Almighty. What are, what are we talking about? We're talking about the, the relationship what, which Jacob had between God, between him and his God, and the relationship Jacob would be telling Joseph that he would be gathering between him and his God, and looking back at the pattern that Jacob had with his God. So that's generational. And the power of the generational blessing, if you don't have it, we give it to you by the Independent Christian Churches International. We bless you with that legal covering, with that blessing of the Spirit. We bless you with the lineage that goes all the way back to the apostles. We are standing on firm ground to help you with the God of our fathers. We're not talking about our natural fathers. We're talking about our walk with God. Now, my father had a great walk with God, and till his day, he was straight and forward and clean and holy and lived for God and walked out of this earth to go into a majestic mansion. My father had principle. And those things which my father did, I understand and I walk by and I use that as a guide there. But I also must have my leadership of the Almighty. And Jacob did not want him to miss this. Don't do it just because I say so. Have dreams, have visions, go for He saw him standing there before him in the princely robes of Egypt. And he knew that had it not been for the dreamer that was in him, for him seeing the dreamer that was in Joseph and putting a coat of many colors on him to begin with. And, and there he went off to Egypt. And in that walk, Joseph had to find God on his own. So he wanted him to have the routine of Jacob and his, his old way, but he wanted him to be blessed by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above? Not somebody else's blessings, not an inherited blessings, your own blessings. You say, well, I didn't come from any of that. I don't have any of that. I was a, I was a this, I was a... You, you're just like the, like the apostle Paul, who was Saul, and all of a sudden he received blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast, blessings of the womb, Blessings of the Father. It's a great study. You ought to go to Genesis 49 and look at that someday. And, and he even said he wanted the blessings that would prevail against the blessings of progenitors, people around him, unto the utmost bounds of the everlasting hills. You know how far out that blessing is? That blessing goes strong, and he says, they shall be on the head of Joseph. Are you a Joseph? Are you a Joseph that has been set aside from all other men and women in your life? And did it come early on? Maybe you ran from God, you didn't yield to God, but here we are talking and here we are listening to the kingdom thoughts, the things that, that you must do now. You are one of the Josephs of this day and God is here to bring his redemption through you and bring a crown on your head that will separate you from your Brethren, yes, Joseph is dead, but the Lord has his Josephs. In Joseph's dying hours, he said, I don't want to be buried here. I want you to take me back. And so Joseph just gathered up. He fell. He fell on him weeping and because uh, and, 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 he always loved him, although he was separated from him. And he, and he went back to be buried in the cave that was the field of, of a Machpelah. That's the place he went, and he put that life of Jacob there. And, 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 and it said that Jacob made an end of commanding his son. And then he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered into his people. I would like to say something to all of my sons and daughters in the gospel. There comes a time 
when I have to be your supporter, when I have to talk to you about going forward on your own ideas and your own ways and survive dream killers, because when it comes time for me to fold my feet and go to bed, I want you to be powerful in your world and in your way and not be bound to my ways and my ideas. There are strengths that come to you, but when I yield up the ghost, I will do that. At that time, you know, there were 40 days of mourning that fulfilled for him, and, and Joseph went to bury uh, his father, and with him went all the servants of Pharaoh and the elders of his house and the elders of the land of Egypt. I mean, everybody came. These people were their, were their slaves. They were their enemies. But when I go to heaven, I'm headed to find my natural father. I'm headed to find my natural grandfather. And I want all of you to come with me. And let's go and show them the seed that has come out of the lands and the blessings of when they saw something special in me and began to raise me up. And I began to find my dream killers. I began to find that place. What happened there? You know, there are some still who understand by experience. And that's the best kind of understanding. The meaning of this passage that I'm, I'm, I'm really dwelling on for these weeks is where the archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength. Are you being criticized? Are you being talked about? Are people using your name in vain? Are people making up stories about you? Oh, if I did half of the things people said I did, I'd be 150 years old. But in the power of this, our arms are made strong by the mighty hand of the God that we serve. He helps you to pull your own bow and let it fly. He helps you to keep your fingers strong. So we're going to be discovering Four things in this passage uh, later, and it may take me a while to get all of this out of my heart and out of my mind, because there is something that happens in each area, and the very first one of that is the cruel assault. The archers have sorely grieved him. That's a cruel assault. Secondly, we're going to talk about the protected warrior. So you, you, you can look at what we're going to be coming up in, how your bow is protected. Thirdly, we're going to talk about his secret. Now, this is some days to come, so you'll just have to stay in the plan or go back and dig around in, in the Internet and find all, all of the parts of this part of surviving dream killers, where his arms were made strong so that his hands would fight well. And then we're going to talk about the amazing comparison that's drawn between you and Jesus Christ between Joseph and Jesus Christ. But let's study that cruel attack. And I, I honestly don't know how to say this because many of the fiery darts that have been shot at me and shot at my wife and shot at my family, I mean, they just come attack. I mean, look what's happening in our nation. I'm speaking to you in 2018, but you may be watching this in 2030 if God tarries. May I say to you, it doesn't change. Somebody has a dream, somebody has an idea, somebody has a way forward, and it's the job of the enemy to fight that with tooth and toenail and to use every person possible to come against that. See, Joseph's enemies were archers. The original has it, the masters of arrows. That is, the men who were well skilled in the use of arrows. Now, all weapons are alike and approved by the warrior in his thirst for blood. He just has every kind of weapon available to get, to get the victory done. But there seems to me to be something more cowardly in the attack of the archer than that of the swordsman. We have our modern-day archmen. I understand and uh, I've talked to men in the military who can shoot from miles away to hit their target. And now the drones that fly in the air, a man can sit in, 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 in Texas and kill men on other sides of the world that are considered to be enemies of our nation. It is, a, it, is, it is to me not like the swordsman. The swordsman, he plants himself near to you. He puts foot to foot. He lets you defend yourself. 
and deal your blows against him. But the archer stands at a distance, hides himself in an ambush, and without you knowing it, the arrow comes whizzing through the air and perhaps penetrates your heart. I want to pray for you right now. We're, we're coming back and talking about that on the next take 10 session. But I want to pray about you right now. I want to ask the Lord to withdraw and to pull out every arrow that you have let come, fiery as they may, and they stick in your mind. Maybe you were thrown in a well like Joseph. I mean, they were ambushing him long before somebody ever, ever, ever put him in a pit. So as we talk about that, let me pray. Father God, I pray right now for everyone who is listening that your Holy Spirit would come over them and that your blood would cover them and that they would, as they repent of allowing this uh, fiery dart to rule in their life, that you withdraw that fiery dart and quench it and cause it to be put in its place. And that whenever anyone would blow on the embers of the coals of that fiery dart to start it all over again, to cause loss and to kill your dreams and visions, I pray that God Almighty will intervene and bring you strength in that hour. I release you today in Jesus' name, and I allow you to go forward. May your dreams survive. May your visions survive. May your powers of ideas have productive authority in the kingdom. We need you. You're needed today. Be strong. Go forward. Don't let the enemy penetrate your heart. God bless you. I'll see you next time.